Yeah, I say I, I use the title Shift Mom Officer, but yeah, I'm also being bossed around, so it's fine. We're all in it. So I think I can just start. I'm just gonna just uh, um, hide the video. Just I think it's better. So I don't know if everyone has bandwidth and data. So I'm just gonna hide the video. And then you can follow along. There's a GitHub link in the chat and uh, also a link to the presentation. The presentation is more like the step-by-step -step, uh, of the process that we're gonna go through that you can follow along um, as well. So let me share my screen. All right. So this is the presentation. Uh, I don't know if you have shared the link yet, Vibash. No, must I, must I share? Okay. So if you want to follow along, you can just go there. So um, not long ago, I we, we needed at work actually to try and implement login for users, but also for that specific case, we had separate um, separate apps. It, it needs to display separate things depending on the person that's logged in, whether the person is admin or the person is not admin, for example. So that's why I started like just this year, I started looking into Auth0 and found this cool um, library that's already there in R and the tutorial that comes with it. So I decided to explore that and I, it, it did work for, for us. So that's what I'm going to share with everyone today. So first, um, I'm going to start with signing up like I've never had an uh, uh, Zero account before. So I'm just going to sign up with one of my accounts that do not, um, that I'm not using on Zero yet. So I can sign on with this one. So you can just create a username and password if you want account, or you can log in with one of the, the, the social links that you, you, you saw there, your GitHub or your Gmail, so that you have a lot of um, options. So now here is a tenant. One tenant can contain many apps, but in my case, I tend to use one tenant for one, let's say I'm working with this company and want to do their apps, I use one tenant for them. So I, you can call your tenants anything that's available. So I can call it our ladies, uh, Josie, see if it's available. And here you can just choose where it's hosted, depending on, you see like different um, places have different laws like uh, data protection and all that. So if you are worried about such laws, you can choose the region that best fit, fits your, uh, the laws that you have to follow. So I create my tenant when I create my account. And um, it should take me straight to the dashboard. Here, so now I can get started and everything. I can create my applications. The application is, I see it as uh, as all you need in order for you to actually use the authentication. So you don't have to have a single application for every R application that you're gonna use, but uh, an application is just that thing that gives you the rules that you're gonna have, the users of the application, um, the different APIs that are gonna be for that application. It doesn't have to be one for every R Shiny app that you have. If you have two Shiny apps that use the same users and don't need separate rules and stuff, you can just use the same Auth0 application for them. So when you come here to applications, you can create an application. For our uh, Shiny app type of application, we have to select regular web applications. 
And so once you select that, you can then say create. It takes you uh, straight on quick start. You don't need to select anything here. You can just skip onto settings where you can then give your app the name that you want. It tells you what domain your app is uh, using. So your tenant is hosted here on this domain. You're going to see where we're going to use them uh, just now. And then you get a client ID and you also get a client uh, secret ID. You're going to use all of these in order for you to actually be able to use the, authentic the authentication in this app. You can add the description if you want. You can add a logo if you want. This is going to be the default logo. And um, here are important stuff that you need to, uh, to add is here. You need to add the URLs that your app is going to use. Let's say your Shiny app locally, it's going to run on localhost with uh, when you run your Shiny app, but you have to say which port on localhost it's going to be using. So uh, I think I say it here. In those, there's are three boxes you need to fill in with uh, the URL that your, that your Shiny app is going to use. If you're going to also use it in production, you need to make sure that you also add those remote servers to those boxes in order to use them in, in production. And if your app in production is inside a folder, you must not include the folder when you actually add it there. You must just uh, put the, the actual um the actual url where it is okay so i'm back in allowed callback urls i say local host port 8080 you can put any other ports that you choose to use just make sure that you put the actual ports that you're going to be using with your your shiny app on local host so i add them to these three boxes and then um this is the most important stuff I have to do here. Then I've changed, uh, I've saved my changes. I'm good now. So my application is now created. I have all the details for my applications and I've told my applications which URLs it should expect uh, uh, connections from. At this point, I'm only using it locally. So I'm only adding my local host. Then I can go to user management and actually add a user. I can just add myself as a user. So here I am. I choose whatever password is good enough. And I've created my user. At this point, I haven't put any restriction. So other users can also create their own account by signing up or uh, using normal password user authentication or by signing up using social media links because I haven't put any type of restriction. So when I've created a user here, I can see that uh, it's still pending. Normally, when you create, the user also receives an email for verification. But in the case where, for example, I feel like you don't have that tech savvy users or you're the one creating yourself, you can just uh, verify if you feel comfortable with it so that they can use it immediately without having to verify themselves. So here I have myself created and I can now set up my app to use uh, Auth0. Do I have any questions so far? Are we all cool? Yeah, there's none in the chat, Sarah. There's one in the chat. All right. Let sorry, me I said, sorry, I said, sorry, I said. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. Okay. 
So here, now we've done this part, it's now time for us to go to the R, R part of our, our session. So now we're gonna try and create our app and make sure that our app has first a login page before the user can actually see what's happening. So I'm going to share my R window All right, we're here. So you must make sure that you have a, the library, you install the library Auth0 if you uh, already have it. So I don't need to install it, but if you don't have it, you need to actually install it like this before you can actually be able to use uh, Auth0 inside of your, your Shiny app. So when you work with uh, Auth0 in Shiny app, you need to store all your access information it must be present in a file. And you create this file using Auth0, use Auth0. This will create a file where I'll open up that file, then you'll see what's in that file. Oh, in my case, it says it's already there. So it's not going to overwrite it, but if it wasn't existing, then it would overwrite it. So this is um, how the, the, def the default one is. So it uses your, your username should be set here, your domain actually should be set here. Then the Auth0 key is your client ID and the Auth0 secret is your secret ID. So generally you don't have to change anything inside this file. It has to be in the root folder where your app using Auth0 is. So if I have to use it in my subfolder here, I also have to either create it and set a path. You can set a path here. If I say, um, if I say this, you can see, you can normally set a path to where you want to store it. But if it is inside a folder, your folder must have that file, the Auth0 YML file, so that it knows which application is going to connect to, and it has the, the secret key as well as the client ID. So it's all here. But you can see here, they are not actually, I don't actually write them here for security purposes. What you do is that you store them in your R environment. And for you to be able to access your R environment, you run this line here. Using use this, you run a function edit R environment, and it opens your R environment. Then you can actually write your um, the details of your client ID and others. So here I have mine already. I can just copy them and put them there. They look something like this. I'm busy copying them. I'm just busy copying everything. Okay, so they, they look something like this, except it's gonna be a bit longer. I've just cut down mine so that it's not public. And then here it's going to be longer as well. The auth user, you copy it straight from auth0, where we had, um, let me just go back there on our application. That's the name of your application. In our case, mine, the one I created was Our Ladies Josie. So it should be. All ladies, Josie, and then I can just copy the key from uh, Auth0 website and copy the secret code as well here. And then once I have everything, I store it, and then I restart my session so that um, it can take effect because those um, environment variables, after I've created them, I need to restart my session. Of, uh, so that they can actually take effect. 
So I'm going to actually write my, my real values and then we can continue. Let me save back all my real values there. All right, so here, now that if I restart my session, it should have all taken effect. Now I'm ready to actually use op zero in my app. The first case we look at is a basic example where I just have in my UI a plot and then in my server, I also just output that plot. And for me to run it, I call op zero shiny app op zero UI server. So this should maybe work, maybe not. I know that I've already done something wrong. Um, can you guys see the pop-up when, uh, when I run the Shiny app? No, I can't. You can't. Okay, let me share my entire screen. At this point, can you guys see my R Studio? We can. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So now it's here. Can you see the pop up? Yes. Okay. So uh, inside R Studio, if you are using Auth0, it can't run here. You have to actually open it in the browser. So I'm going to open it in browser. And it's going to give me an error. Oops, something went wrong because the callback URL that I used, there's a mismatch. That's because the port here is uh, 3381. So I'm on localhost, but I'm not on 8080. So I need to actually make sure that um, my, ports are, my port is frozen so, that, so as to use 8080. So I use this line here, options, shiny.port equals 8080. Now, when I run it, it's on 8080. I should be able to open it. Mm -hmm. I'm already logged in, so it didn't ask me to log in again because I logged in earlier. But normally it should give me a, a box, but I'm gonna log out just now, just to show you. It should give me a box that asks me to log in. But because I logged in earlier with these details, it's allowed me to see the thing already. So very important, the ports that you're going to use, the port that's in there in, um, in Auth0 callback URL, you need to make sure that that's the port that your Shiny app is using. Uh, so that was the first uh, basic app. The next one is if you want to use the UI server um, configuration, there are a few things you need to do. Let me see if that's the one. This is not the one. This is the one. Yeah, so I'm inside Our Ladies, my app. I've, creating, uh, I've created a UI server configuration. And of course, I have my auth0 YML file there. The UI looks like this. So it's like my normal UI, but I have to wrap it inside this function, 
auth zero UI. And then inside the server, my server code, I need to wrap it inside of the zero server for it to run. So in a normal one, I would not have this, but in this specific case, because I want to use of zero, I need to wrap the code of my server inside the functions for of zero. Then I can run my app. Okay. I run my app is inside my app. And I open my browser. And here it is. In this um, app here, you see there's a logout button that I, you implement also with the Auth0 uh, library. In my UI, after the plot, I just call logout button like this, and it's going to display the logout button for me in my app. So that once I'm done, I can actually log out. And it takes me back to the sign, sign in page. So every time you actually start, it should take you here to a sign up page like this. I just want to like by a show of hand, who's been able to actually run it. It's fine if you haven't been, but like who's been able to, to follow? Like if you can just like put a, a thumbs up or a reaction. Thank you, Matlatse. <laughs> Might be going too fast. I'm not seeing who clapped. I see one clap. Ah, I'm seeing here. Yeah. Faith, yay. But yeah, if you couldn't, it's fine. You can just uh, follow again the, the prompt, I mean, the, the presentation, and you'll be able to actually do it. So next on our agenda is uh, well, we've created users. We've done the R part, the basic one. Next, we want to be able to display the user information. So I'm going to have a, an app. Okay, I've called it app two. And this one has the UI and the server as functions inside the same file. In my server, I'm doing something here. From the session, I'm getting user data. And from user data, I'm getting auth0 info. So it just gives me uh, the profile information about the user. And then from C for session, I'm getting user data. And from user data, I'm getting auth0 credentials. So giving the credentials of the specific user for this session. And then in uh, the UI, I'm just printing them verbatim. So this, I'm op I open in the browser. I need to log in because I logged out before. And you can see the first one gives me, first I print the user info. It gives me uh, details that are used for this user. But uh, I need to actually give myself another name there. If you, if you pay attention, you'll see that I'm actually using uh, a pre-existing app that I created. So I'm just going to change the details quickly so that I come to this one because I'll be changing it as we go.
that, that gives you a chance to have some water or coffee, <laughs> like two minutes. Yeah, if anyone has any questions as well, you can pop them in the chat in the meantime. Uh, Diana, I don't know if you are still going through the motions, but we can't hear I you. Am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Oh, <can't>. no. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've gone to my new, uh, to the new app. So you can see now uh, when I print, it prints uh, my user info. Here I have sub is like this uh, unique ID for, for the, the logged in uh, user. So you can use it if you want to let's say personalize your app to different users. You can use this, uh, this uh, element here. You can get the, you get the nickname. You have the nickname was just cut from my email. And then my name is just my email. This is my default picture I get. And when it was, uh, the, the account was updated. And here I'm just getting uh, my access information for this session. And uh, if I want to do it, in a UI server environment, I need to create a global.r where I save the information using of zero of zero info. I save the information in a variable a zero info. And this specific variable, whatever you call it, needs to be sent to the UI and to the server. So remember, I wrap my UI into this function and this function accepts a, a parameter called info where I'm now going to send the info that I gathered there in global.r. And I do the same with server. I'm going to accept the info 
that I got from global.r. I'm just going to open the chat and see if I have quick questions in there. OK. Everyone is OK. So for me to be able to access the user info, the session info for this user, I must make sure that I send this ver this information to my server and my UI, and I must get that information inside uh, global.r. Then I can be able to use uh, to see the user info as well. And you can see with me that you can now um, use it for different things because it's uh, now you have access to it. You can have an if statement there easily that checks if the user name, the nickname is this or that, then do this or don't show this part of my app. Otherwise, show it. Like here, I've created a, a text that takes the nickname and says, welcome, nickname to uppercase. So I don't know if you can see it here. Um, I have so many servers now. Yeah. So I ran the text where I say welcome and I'm using op zero info, but from, he, from it, I just take the nickname and that's what I display there before displaying my, my uh, plot. And you can go further in terms of managing the users. You can add more information to a user those information, uh, this information is called uh, metadata, where we have two types. We have the user metadata, which is like information about the user, extra information that you need about the user. And the user, if you allow them, they actually have access to edit it. So you see here, they give you an example, the color preference or their blog URL. These are stuff that you want them to be able to change. And then the app metadata is extra information, but they do not have access to it. They cannot change it. For example, I can add the role of a person and uh, set it to admin or set it to user. I would add it to the metadata because I don't want them to change their role and upgrade the, their, their privileges, for example. Here, I can put... Uh, block URL so that the person can change their block their, their blog URL if they want to, if I allow them to. And I can save this as, as, as saved as JSON data. So you just put the, the name of the new piece of data that you want and then the value. So there's the key and this is the value. And I can have more than one. I can have uh, organization, for example. Which organization do they belong to? If I want, let's say, different organizations to see different things in my, in my um, app, I can have this little extra information here. And then I save it. So this um, metadata can be added to rules and those rules can further restrict what people have access to in terms of the app. Instead of me just implementing it inside the app and having if statements after getting the stuff, the rules can even prevent people from having access to the app or redirect them to the app that they actually need. Uh, so here we are. The rules, they are JavaScript functions that ex execute when the user authenticates and they run once the authentication process is complete. They extend the capabilities of, of uh, your Auth0 app. I gave an example, if you see in the Our Ladies uh, folder, there's a rule example. It's written in JavaScript. So 
every rule um, is in JavaScript and it receives the user, the context, and the callback. This specific rule that I have here is it, it's me wanting to add user metadata to the ID token. Remember the ID token is what we saw. Uh, I think it's here. Was it here? No, it was here where we wanted to print the user info. It was sent here using the ID token. So I want to have more than that, just the profile info. I also, I also want to have their metadata printed there. The, the user metadata as well as the app metadata. So what I do is that when you want to add something to a token, in order to avoid conflicts, let's say you have multiple apps in your, in your, your tenant or you have multiple tenants and all that, you give a namespace so that you try and separate the different uh, tenants and applications. So my application here, I'm gonna give it a, this namespace. It does not have to be an actual website that's online. You can give it some IP that doesn't really exist. As long as it's unique to that specific uh, case, it's, it's fine. As long as you don't reuse it in another application that shouldn't, uh, that shouldn't access this stuff, you're fine. So even if this one is not an actual website that's online, I'm still good. So I create my namespace. I store the user metadata. This is how I access it using JavaScript. I access its metadata. I'm just saying if it's there, yes, store it there. But if it's not, return an empty dictionary. And then I add it to the ID token. I'm not just saying add a, a value called user metadata. I'm saying I'm, I'm pasting it with the namespace to make it unique. So I add it, I add the, the user metadata and then I add the app metadata and then the callback here, just ties it all together. Okay, so now my rule is set. I have to actually implement it inside of um, of auth zero. They have changed the the GUI a bit, so I have to find where the rules are. Yes, now they are inside auth pipeline. Rules are here. I can then create a rule from an empty rule because our, I have my rule that I actually know I want to implement. So here it is. I name it uh, add metadata. All right. Then I save the changes to my rules and then we all hold some cross fingers so that it actually works. So what should happen is that now when I'm here and I run the code that displays the user information, uh, sorry. And now it has added that information for me. Now I have user metadata blog URL, so I can access that. I have metadata role, I can access that. And I have the organization as well. So now that I have access to this, again, uh, as I said before, you can now maybe use an if statement or whatever and decide that if you are from predictive insight, you see this. Otherwise you see that. If you're an admin, you see more. If you are a user, you only see your own stuff. If you're an admin, you see everybody's stuff, for example. So it just extends the capabilities of, of what you, you could do. So one last thing is the pricing. The pricing is pretty good because in all uh, projects I've used, I haven't used, I haven't needed to go to another tier other than the free one. The free one allows you to have about up to 7,000 users. 
and use up to two social connections. So they can be able to also log in via two social connections. For example, you can choose login with Google and Facebook or login with Google and GitHub and so on. And then they give you a lot of tokens to use. You can still use the, the APIs and you can use up to three roles, which in my case has been good enough because uh, I don't need uh, that many rules. I can also implement some of the rules inside my, my um, on the R side, you see, as long as I receive the right uh, credentials and information using my rule that I set up on of zero here. So for me, the free tier has been able to work. But if you need more, then you have other plans that you can also go for uh, if you want to, to have uh, bigger applications that do more things. And in terms of resources, the first one here is a great one because it's, it's a starter for how to use Auth0 in R. And then if you need all the other Auth0 information, on their website, there's a lot of data, of, of information about adding rules, adding users, all the details of user management. There's like a lot, a lot more functionality than what I, I have covered here. Uh, there's like a lot. So it's really cool to, when you think of, oh, can I do this? Yeah, there's a great chance you can do it. So you can just go there and figure out how to do it. And, that's it for today, for me. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Diana. Thanks so much. If anybody does have questions, um, please do either unmute yourself and ask. Uh, we don't mind that either. Or you can pop them in the chat if you're a bit shy. You're welcome. I'm going to ask a question to the audience. Is what is the the user level of perhaps shiny apps? Who use shiny apps? I mean, who would maybe now that they know about this authentication think about trying to implement it? on my to-do list. <laughs> um, I just want to ask you, Inger, like, um, is, it, uh, is it something that you have thought of using or that you have needed? So not the authentication, um, but I must say, while I was watching, I was, I was thinking you could maybe even use something in, with this with students you know if you wanted them to view certain tech you know if we didn't have a platform if you didn't have really have an education platform you could sort of set it up for students and that's it especially with r like if you want to do a practical component with your test or something like that mm, that mm. could actually be quite a nice um uh, yeah and i think i think this uh this topic today is nice for r but it's also nice for anyone who wants to think about authentication yeah because it can be implemented Auth0 can be implemented in so many other, using so many other platforms Ooh. that, yeah, it's what actually. Are the, what are the other authentication uh, platforms that are available out there? Um, I don't know if, Matlase, are you here? The one that we wanted to use as a key clock or something, that was a bit more complex okay. and that, um, I didn't start using it, so I just, I went off zero route to figure out how, what we can do with it. Someone else went the key cloak <laughs> route and uh, mine worked for me. So I stuck with it. <laughs> you got there first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. I think. And I think especially if it's, if it's something that you, you, that works, then it's, then at least we know if we want to do something like that, then we can, it's worth our while to spend the time also to, 
go through your presentation again and learn how to do it. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. You were very intimidating because you very clearly know how everything works and how everything fits together. You know. So well it's done. been <laughs> uh, it's been a lot of research and a lot of how do you do this? And then I go and I put it together and then, hmm. oh, but then what, what can we add? What can we add? So we had to go through that process. So hmm. I'll have questions, especially for my other teammates who's trying key code, like, but can you do this? And like, okay, let's look at how, let's look for how to do that. Hmm. But then how, that's how we actually came to this, to this place. Exactly. So I'm like, okay, now I have a whole working process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lesson in that. Everyone can learn something. You just keep going and you keep trying, and then you're stuck, yeah. you know, you keep looking for the answers. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's what I like about, um, about this whole, maybe in other companies it's different. In our company with data science, and there's this learning component. Oh. And we always like, not just we learn, but also when we learn, you're like, okay, let's share with others. So it makes you. Put it together so that you have oh, this is how it actually went so yeah oh, that's really nice i like that atmosphere there's, and i i get the feeling that there's not a lot of companies that will have that sort of attitude so that's really that's very nice thanks yeah <laughs> ah yes your other youtube link yes <laughs> <laughs> so we can we can either watch the president or we can watch your YouTube. <laughs> Please watch me. I'll okay. we'll get a. I'm, I'm waiting for the the summary. I always wait summary. for the summary. I get very stressed watching it. I'm very anxious, so I'm just. I just wait for the summary. I'm like, someone just give me a summary, and then I go for the memes on Twitter. That's Absolutely. that's the next step. Yeah. All you need. <laughs> you just need to know what the new rules are, and then move on. <laughs> yeah.